Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to animate this bell icon and set it up with the uh, state machine. There's a link to the source file in the video description if you'd like to follow along. You can either download the file or use the open and rive button if you just want to go into the file, look at how the state machine's set up or anything like that. So with that being said, let's hop into it. Okay, so here's our bell and let's quickly take a look and see how it's set up. So we've got the main icon here on its own group, and if you notice, I've moved the origin up here uh, to be centered on the top ellipse, so that when I rotate it, it's rotating from that point, and that ellipse doesn't even look like it's moving. Um, and then uh, down below that, I've got a uh, another group inside of it that has the um, little ringing piece on it, and I've done that so that I can move it back and forth. Um, now, all of the artwork itself is relatively simple. I'm just using ellipses for, so for this top part is an ellipse, the little ringing piece is an ellipse. This right here is just a, um, a stroke. Um, no, actually, I think, I'm, no, I'm using a rounded rectangle here. I thought I might be using a stroke. Um, but this bell piece, this is the only thing that um, was a little more difficult to set up. Now, I still use an ellipse, and I'll show you how I did this just drug out an ellipse and then went into edit vertices mode and you can remove this um, bottom vertex here and then just drag these two um, vertices down to the bottom now all the uh, all the handles are set on um, detached right now so I can drag them out at different angles and um, make them have their own different lengths so that I can create more of a um, custom shape here now to get the curvature of the bell, all you need to do is just drag these handles over and you'll want to go through and make sure that um, you've got the right angles and length. So let's say this, let's put this at negative 45. So for this one to be at a 45 degree angle uh, or the inverse angle is this, um, I think it needs to be at negative 135. Five, I believe no let's see let's take 45 away from so this is negative 45 uh, I think that's that should be right actually maybe it's just the length so the length out is 64 and this one's 74 so let's set this to 64 okay so that should be good and then we can just change this top vertex here to mirrored and drag that out a bit. And you can see how we're so, uh, starting to get that bell shape. Now, you can keep adjusting these um, these handles here until you actually get um, the shape that you want. Okay, so that's how the artwork is set up. So uh, let's hop into animate mode, get it animated, and then we'll uh, add it to a state machine, and I'll show you how to set that up. Okay, so here we are in animate mode, and we're going to quickly animate this, uh, and what we're going to do is actually just swing the bell back and forth, and have our um, little piece at the bottom swing and hit the sides of the bell, and then slowly come to a stop, and then we'll set it all up in a state machine. Okay, so um, to start this animation, let's go ahead and get the main bell group swinging back and forth, and then we can use that timing um, to animate the little part down here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and key the initial rotation at the beginning of the timeline. And then at every uh, 10 milliseconds, I'm going to swing it back and forth. So starting at 10 F, I'm going to go ahead and swing it um, to one side in its most extreme position. So I'm going to go with uh, 15 degrees and then we'll go to 20 F and I'm going to swing it back to 15 degrees. And then from here, what I'm going to do to actually start slowing the bell down is start removing um, a set amount of degrees every time it swings back to the opposite direction. So I'm going to start with five. So when it uh, we're at, let's see, negative 15 here. So when it goes back the other direction into the positive, we're going to just go to 10 degrees. And now when it swings back to the right, let's go down to negative five degrees. And then instead of just uh, going to zero here, um, let's take off a little bit more, or uh, let's take off a little bit less. So instead of taking off five degrees and just ending at zero, let's go to like maybe three degrees. 
And then at the end of the timeline, we can go to zero. Just like that. Now let's add in some uh, easing here and take a look at this and see what we think. Okay, so that's a nice little shaking motion. Now, we're going to want this little piece down here to actually ring out past um, the ending of or, or the uh, last key that we created. So we need to give ourselves a little bit of extra time on the timeline. So I'm going to extend the timeline to two seconds. And then we can go in and add um, the keys for this. Uh, I don't really know what to call it, so I just called it the dingy thing. Um, so all we're going to do is animate the X properties here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, key the initial X position. And then when it swings to the left, I want this to go ahead and move down to the opposite side because uh, gravity is pulling it down this way. And then I'll do the same on the opposite side. So just move it to the left like so. And then we'll just keep following that pattern. On the next two keys, I believe. Yeah. And so for these last two keys, um, I don't think the bell is actually uh, moving um, fast enough for this little piece to actually get all the way over to the side. So what we're going to do is start, um, do the same, uh, use the same concept that we did with the actual bell group, where we're going to start um, removing some of that motion as it swings back and forth. Now, for this, I'm not being quite as uh, strict about um, how much on the X I'm removing every time it goes back and forth. Generally, I'm just trying to um, make sure that I'm going less, or I'm... Um, I'm getting closer and closer to the center as it swings back and forth. So just a couple more keys here. And then we'll end it at zero on the next one. So right here. Now let's uh, add our easing here. And I'm just going to go ahead and double check that I don't have any Y keys. I don't. All right. And let's preview that and see what it looks like. Okay, so the actual motion um, of everything and the timing looks good, but you can see on these first couple keys here that those getting to their next position at the same time doesn't look great. So what we need to do is offset our uh, keys for this piece from our main bell group. So let's give ourselves a little bit extra room on the timeline. I'm just going to give myself an extra second and then just grab these keys here and drag them to the right. So let's see what that looks like. That looks pretty good. I think, I think we're going to go ahead and go with this. Now, I'm going to uh, turn this animation into a looping animation, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so before we actually set up our, um, our, our state machine, we need to add in a second animation. Let me go ahead and ring, uh, um, rename this, and I'm going to call this um, hover. And then I'm going to add another animation and call it idle. Now, what I need for this idle animation is just these first two keys here. I'm going to go ahead and post, uh, oops, go ahead and copy these keys. Uh, ooh, what am I doing? Here we go. Let me copy these. Command C, Command V. There we go. And just line them up at the beginning of the timeline. All right. Now, the reason that I'm going to uh, have this idle animation is going to become a little more apparent when we set up the state machine. So let's add a state machine. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag the idle animation on the graph, hook it to entry, and then add the hover animation. And then I'm going to create a two way transition here between idle and hover. Now, uh, we need to add our input so that we can um, go ahead and configure this. Um, so let's add an input. And I'm going to go ahead and add a Boolean. Now, a Boolean is different than a trigger. And we've used triggers a lot in the state machines that we've set up, um, is that the Boolean will be able to hold a true value or a false value for long periods of time. So the reason that I um, converted this um, hover animation into a looping 
animation is that um, as long as, because this would be like maybe some sort of button, as long as the users hovered over this button, I want this animation to play. Now, if we go back and look at our timeline here, there's a little bit of extra space here at the end so that after our animation's done, it'll pause for a second and then play again. So we don't want it to just continuously play, 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 play. It's good to give ourselves a little bit of a gap. Okay, let's go ahead and add our Boolean here to our transitions so we can actually um, control how um, this button works. So for the transition going from idle to hover, I'm just going to add in a condition, select that Boolean. We do need to uh, rename that, and I'll do that in a second, but we want it to be true so that... Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and rename this hover. And so when the hover Boolean is true, the hover animation will play. And then going back the opposite direction, when the hover um, boolean is false, it will go back to the idle animation. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. So right now it's just going to sit on our idle because hover is not true. And then when it's true, it'll play a continuously loop. Now we can toggle that off. And as you can see, it switches back to the idle animation uh, fairly quickly. So what we can do is give ourselves a little bit of um, duration or we can um, set an exit time. So the exit time is going to tell this animation how how much of this animation needs to play um, before switching back to the idle. So we can do this two ways. We can either add a, a duration value so it'll just mix the two animations together so we can look and see what that looks like. So there's the hover and let's let's make it uh, false during the animation. So you can see it, it mostly works. Um, we can even increase that time. So let's say 500 milliseconds. And like that looks pretty decent. It's just blending the two animations together. Now we can also just turn that duration off, enable our exit time and say it needs to play um, a hundred percent of that um, hover animation before switching back to the idle. So let's see what that looks like. So you can see that there's there's multiple ways to actually uh, set this state machine up um, using the duration and exit time values. Um, and it's really just gonna be based on what you think looks best. So that's gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if there's something that you'd like to learn, uh, please leave a comment in the video description and we'll try to address those as quickly as possible. Um, if you followed along, uh, go ahead and post your um, creations up on the community so that I can uh, see what you guys are working on because really like to see it um, and I'll uh, drop by and leave you a comment so with that being said uh, thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the next one